Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. Now I do like the Jerry Anderson TV series Terror Hawks. It was one that always grabbed my imagination as a child. And in front of me here you can see all of the action figures that were produced for uh, that show. But it's a little bit of a one-sided set of action figures. On the left we have seven of the good guys of the Terror Hawks. And on the right we just have Zelda on her own. And that was the only sort of evil baddie figure that you got in the line. And it just seems a little bit unfair that she has no way of protecting her herself against the Terrorhawks. So today I thought I'd have a go at making some of uh, Zelda's little sidekicks the cubes because of course the Terrorhawks have the Xeroids and these are fantastic little toys that you can see here. They have two parts. You have a little part that comes off the stand and you can close their eyes and they just look generally pretty cool. And I always thought the uh, cubes that Zelda had also looks really nice. So, uh, and they have a fairly simple design as well. They are literally a cube with sort of rounded edges and some faces stuck on each side. And each face had a sort of a different expression. Some were angry, some were happy. And then there was one which was a laser. So it should be a fairly straightforward thing to make. Uh, let's just have a go and see what we can make. Now I want the cubes to be the same scale as the uh, rest of the three and three quarter inch action figures. I was hoping I could find a plastic cube that would just be the right size, but I can't. So we're just gonna make one. Now this is a Xeroid. You can see here he is just a sphere and by looking at some sort of reference shots of the show the cubes are just slightly bigger than the Xeroid. So I'm going to just measure this just to see how wide he is and he is I would say about three and a half centimetres wide. So if we make the cubes four centimetres that will probably look a pretty good scale. And we're going to construct them out of uh, polystyrene sheets. Now you can buy this stuff from most model shops. This is a two millimetre thick sheet. It's fairly cheap. I think these are sort of uh, five to seven pounds. And I've used these for a few other projects that you'll, if you've watched my channel, you'll see using them quite often. And it's quite nice material to work with. It's got a good flex to it. It's easy to cut and it's easy to stick together using plastic weld. Now we need to make a cube out of uh, this polystyrene sheet. So we're going to have to cut some squares out. You don't just cut out six squares that are the same size. You actually need to have th uh, three different types. We're going to cut out two squares that are exactly four centimetres square. We're going to cut out two that are uh, four centimetres by 3.6 millimetres because that is uh, four centimetres minus the two millimetres for either side of uh, the uh, cube because this styrene is two millimetres thick. And then we're going to cut out two that are 3.6 millimetres by 3.6 millimetres, so two slightly smaller squares. Uh, it's a fairly easy stuff to cut, as I've shown you before. You just have to score it and it will snap. So I'm just going to get sort of marking with a pencil and then get cutting. So after a short amount of cutting I've now got these six panels that I need to make the cube. I've got the top uh, two which are four centimetres square. Uh, these ones are four centimetres by 3.6 centimetres and then these bottom ones are 3.6 centimetres square and uh, because of that they should all fit together. So you can see that I can put those two pieces together and then hopefully this small piece will just sort of fit inside and there'll be a two millimetre gap around the bottom edge which there is. So it should all fit together. Um, um, as I say, I've never actually made this before, uh, so it's just a sort of a sort of guess as I'm going. But uh, making a cube should be fairly straightforward. I'm going to stick all of this together using plastic weld. I have this here again. This I picked this up from model shop. This works particularly well with this styrene plastic. Use a brush to apply it. It sort of melts the edge a bit, and then you can stick them together. So really, all I can do now is get this all stuck, uh, let it dry, and then we can start sort of filing down and smoothing off the edges because the cubes actually have slightly rounded edges. You don't want to sort of sharp edge to them. So once this is all stuck I'm going to get some files out and we'll file it all down. But the first thing to do is to stick it all together.
So this is the uh, basic cube. Just before I'm putting the top on, I've actually just uh, sanded down some of these edges just to make sure they're nice and flat. And then this uh, top section should just drop on. I have a feeling I've made this cube slightly too large. I'm just sort of comparing it to the Xeroid now. I think that might be a little bit big. I'm going to carry on with it at this scale just because, uh, you know, this is a sort of prototype at this stage. It might be that it should do with, you know, if we, we took off sort of uh, five millimetres all round, that might be a better scale. But uh, it's still going to look quite nice. I can do some of these at sort of different scales once I'm finished. But yeah, I have a feeling that is going to be slightly too large. But as I say, sometimes with a prototype, you just sort of have to work through it and see what happens. But overall, the actual cube itself, that's a pretty nice solid cube. So I'm going to stick this top piece on now and then we'll sand down all of the edges and uh, sort of make it uh, a little bit rounded and see if that makes a difference. It might be that they're just taking the corners off actually sort of makes it look a little bit sort of less large. So again, I'm going to put a lot of this uh, plastic weld all around the top. And then we can stick the top piece in place like so. And there we have our cube. Not a bad cube considering it's just made out of bits of styrene. We can sand down some of the sort of the dribbles of uh, the uh, plastic weld. I'm actually going to put a lot of plastic weld around the edge now to try and hide some of these joints. Plastic weld does melt this styrene and you should be able to fill in those little cracks and uh, gaps. But that is a pretty solid cube. Now the cube has had time to dry, I can start sort of shaping it. I've got a small needle file here and I'm just going to sand down all of these edges, make them a bit rounder and then I'll go over it with a bit of a very fine uh, grain sandpaper and take off some sort of more of the sort of imperfections that I've managed to put on there when making it. Overall it's actually a pretty solid cube. Uh, I think it's going to work quite nicely. Just it's fine detailing now, so let's get to filing and sanding and see if we can round off all of these edges. And after a fair amount of filing and sanding, I've now got a really nice solid looking cube and I've sort of rounded off all of the edges. And I think that's uh, going to do quite nicely. The only problem with it is it's a bit too big and I'm still convinced it's a bit too big. So I think before I go any further, I'm going to remake this cube, but at a slightly smaller scale. Now we did measure these at the start and I said it was about three and a half centimetres across and I've made this four centimetres and I think that four centimetres is just too big. So I'm going to remake this at three and a half centimetres and uh, that then will be pretty much exactly the same size but as a cube of uh, the xeroid head. So a little bit of an, a sort of an annoyance because I've got to go and remake this but you know you learn things as you go along and I'm actually very pleased with how sort of nice that cube has come out. So I might end up making uh, this into a cube anyway and put the faces on but I want to get one that's exactly the same scale as the action figures. So uh, I'm going to remake this at three and a half centimetres and uh, I'll be back in a second. If you like Terrorhawks and would like to know more, then why not check out Fusion Magazine issue 8 because I've written a special article for them all about the Terrorhawks toy line. The magazine is jam-packed full of uh, articles all about retro gaming, modern gaming, tabletop gaming and all sorts of toy related stuff. So it's well worth checking out. I've been writing for them for a few months. So if you check out the last few issues, you'll see other toy articles that I have written. It's available as a physical magazine, as you can see here in front of me, but also as a digital download. You can find out all the details at Fusion Game Magazine. Com. I will put a link in the description so you can go and grab yourself a copy and also grab some of the back issues. P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. 
Right, well I'm back uh, and no time has passed for you at all. For me it's taken about 20 minutes to remake the cube. So this is now three and a half centimetres as opposed to the four centimetre cube. You can see it doesn't look like a massive difference but actually when you put it next to uh, the Xeroid that looks a much better scale. So uh, this is what I'm going to go with. I've sanded it all down and given it a good sort of finish. There's still a few little rough edges but so little, maybe a little bit more sanding will get that right. But by the time I put some stickers and stuff on this I think that's going to look pretty good. Uh, I am going to give this a quick coat of paint. I've got some uh, rattle cans out in my garage. I think I have a, a gloss white so I might just give this a quick go over with a gloss white because all of these uh, figures have been painted. You can see here that this is a grey plastic with a silver sort of top coat to it so I don't think a bit of paint on this is going to make it stand out too much. So yeah a quick coat of uh, just sort of a white gloss rattle can on that. I think that should finish it off. It's actually not a bad finish already. A little bit sort of uh, rough and we can see where I've sanded actually. You can see just there's a few little sand marks there. Uh, so a coat of paint will make that look pretty nice. So let's go ahead and do that. I first gave the cubes an undercoat with a sort of grey primer just to make sure there was sort of no blemishes and stuff left on. And the grey primer is a great way of sort of uh, ironing out some of the imperfections that I'd sanded into the surface. Once that had dried I gave it a couple of coats with a gloss white uh, spray paint. Uh, this was a humbrol spray paint, just something that I'd already got lying around. And again that sort of hid a few more of the imperfections that were sort of obvious on the surface. And then as a final coat I found the remnants of a pearl spray which had a just sort of a little bit of a glint to it. So uh, I gave a quick spray of that over the top of the white gloss and this is what we've ended up with. You can see the cubes are now a nice flat white colour but actually if I sort of twist and turn them in the uh, lights here you can see there is a little bit of a glint going on. There's just a little bit of shininess to it and that was what the uh, pearl spray added to it. These are actually still a little bit on the tacky side. You can see there's a few little marks on the bottom where I've rested it on that pot. That shouldn't be an issue because we're actually going to be sticking stickers over the top of that but uh, it's uh, still a little bit on the tacky side so I'm not going to handle those too much. And I've sprayed both of them as you can see. So this is the four centimeter one and this is the three and a half centimeter one. And I'd still think the three and a half centimetre one is the correct size. Now we do need some stickers to go on this because each face of the cubes has a different sort of expression on it. There's an angry one and a happy one and then some laser sort of uh, holes to go top and bottom. And I've done a bit of an image search on uh, Google and found someone has already sort of done a layout showing all of the different faces and these look like they're pretty correct. I've uh, done some screenshots as well from Terrorhawks and the uh, ones on this image all seem to line up and look correct. So I'm going to use that as the basis and make myself a new set of stickers because uh, that image actually isn't a very high resolution thing but it's good enough to sort of get some uh, rough ideas from. So I'm going to take that into Photoshop, rework it and make some new stickers that will stick onto this. So I'm going to make them at the smaller size but I'm also going to print out a larger version just so I can get this one finished. Seeing as I've made it I might as well finish it.
as I was using someone else's file as a guide, these are actually pretty quick to uh, sort of work on. As you can see, this is the end result. I printed these out onto some glossy sticky back paper. I think they should really work quite nicely and sort of finish off the uh, look of this uh, little cube here. Uh, and this is the order they go in. So that one's the sort of the front face and then these others go around the sides and then these are the top and bottom uh, laser section. So really all that's left to do is actually to stick these on. As I said at the start, here is a slightly larger version for the uh, four centimeter cube but the file I've made is for the three and a half centimeter cube and I will put this available on toyploy.com if anyone wants to have a go at making one of these themselves I can't believe they will but if you do this file will be available so uh, let's just get cutting I'm going to cut these out and we'll place them onto the cube and see how it looks And here are the finished cubes. I'm actually more happy with them than I expected. They just look really nice. So much so I actually went and made a couple more, as you can see, uh, just because you can't just have one cube. You need to have a few of them. So this is the finished thing. You can see it's uh, completely scratch built, made just out of styrene. The stickers do make quite a big difference to it because otherwise it would just be a cube. You can see there's a little bit of iridescence going on there with the sort of sparkly top coat that I put on the white material. And you can see we've got all the faces that we can rotate around uh, sort of between. Uh, the larger one, actually I still quite like, uh, and it almost works with the sort of larger xeroid that you can get. This is the sort of part die cast xeroid. And actually the scale of that is probably a little on the small side, but it does look quite nice sort of with that standing next to it. So I'm gonna put the larger one on display with my bigger xeroid. And these smaller ones do match the uh, three and three quarter inch figures. Now I'm going to put the uh, file available for uh, making the stickers onto toyploy.com and if you want to make your own then uh, that file is scaled to work with cubes that are 3.5 centimeters all round. Uh, if you want to do it on a large one then you'll just have to scale the file to fit which is exactly what I did here just scaled it up slightly and it does take a little bit of time to make these. The first one took me slightly longer than sort of 20 minutes uh, but once I'd made one the rest are pretty quick to do actually. You sort of get into a little system and making more at one go uh, proved very sort of easy. I got a lot of those done in a relatively short amount of time and actually while I was making the second lot of them I was thinking it'd be quite nice to put a magnet inside. If I put a magnet inside top and bottom you would be able to stick a few of these together and they sort of pile up. So I might come back to this project, buy a few sort of very cheap little hobby magnets and stick them inside as I'm making them and then we can make some magnetic versions of these uh, Terra Hawks cubes. I think that might look quite nice. Also I was thinking uh, you can just just buy uh, blank dice. So I've ordered a whole load of blank dice. Now they're not this scale, they're much smaller, but they would probably look quite good with some of the die cast vehicles if you had a few of these little uh, mini cubes around. So I've ordered a whole load of dice. I've ordered some magnets. I think I'm going to be coming back to this project to make some more of them with some extra features. So uh, watch this space. You may be seeing these again. If you found this video interesting, then please click the subscribe button and make sure to tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.